You know what I want to know? I want to know how long that song goes for. Very long. Like, I did, noticed today. Is it a, it's a long song. It doesn't. I think it just it's repeats. pretty long. Yeah. I would agree. Well, I don't know if it I repeats. Agree. I think there's. I think there's a journey to it. I think there's mountains and valleys. Like a like a beginning, like the beginning of it. It's and it, it really slams you in, right? Like dun dun dun, dun and then from there now we're in now we're in the pocket of it. And we're yeah. feeling like, okay, it's a little bit of a groove. Yeah. Like, we like that, we like that, we like that, we like that. And then it goes into its ending. It ends, right? That's kind of what it, kind of what we're saying. Yeah, it's like ends. most things in life. <laughs> like most things in life, but not us. We don't end. We don't end ever. <laughs> we don't we end ever. We keep going. Yeah. Ever, ever. We, no, we keep going. Ladies we're going to live forever, welcome. Nick. Oh, I mean, I think so. I think we should. I, I don't see why we would. You know what I mean? Like, let's do it. Let's let's jump it's on. Never been done life. before, but like, I'm. That's my goal. If we are anything, we are uh, a people of firsts. Yeah. We do things first, so we'll live yeah. forever first. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Chaos Twins on this special, special, special day. Uh, we are so happy to have you guys with us. Um, it is, it is a pretty insane day. Sasha, wouldn't you agree? It's, it's, it's a, very, a big uh, day full of lots of yeah. feelings and events, yeah. a big shift, yeah. I would say, um, that I'm very, very, I'm, it caught me a bit off guard, but I'm very happy about it. I'm, I feel hopeful, um, for more reasons than, than one. Can I ask you this? Do you, do you feel like you can trust it yet? Oh, I didn't say I feel trustful. I said okay. I feel hopeful. Okay. I, I, go. I, um, no, I, I think trust, uh, you know what, to be honest, there's a lot of broken trust in our country right now. So trust mm -hmm. is a lot to ask of anyone. And yep. that's okay, because that doesn't mean that we are hopeless. It just means that we have to show up. We have to show up for ourselves. We have to show up for our neighbors. We have to show up for people we agree with and people we don't agree with. And I think the return to some order, um, it really depends on all of us. You know, I was I uh, after we wanted to talk just two weeks ago, uh, we had a big breach in trust, I would say, and uh, a big <sighs> breach in security and um, maybe just the foundations of our democracy. And I was like going, you know, listening to different things, reading different things, just sort of in the shock and in the wake of it all and trying to process it. And um, just thinking about someone, I was listening to someone who said, you know, you have, we have elections and we have this thought, we have elections, we have these formal fights, these formal arguments, we have debates, elections, fights, so that we don't have informal chaotic ones all the time. We do this every four years so that we can live peacefully amongst each other. And I have never really sat with how um, fragile this thing is and how dangerous it can get very quickly and how important it is to have, you know, a procession of, you know, um, <laughs> soldiers or just men in Hamilton costumes um, like and going down the street. <laughs> Uh, the uh -huh. cast of Hamilton performed at the inaugural. They didn't. That's not. Those are real people playing instruments. That's not, that, yeah, let's say don't don't lie to them. Don't lie. Come I on, won't. can't lie. We weren't there. Yeah. But just um, how important it is to have that and have and to have you know civil discourse, even when you vehemently and um, on the brim of violently disagree with someone. That we mm -hmm. do this so that we don't fight and so that we don't have chaos and so we don't people don't die needlessly. Like that this is the reason that we have this. So I was um, just struck by all of it and how important it is because not two weeks ago, we, I was laying on my couch taking a nap and you called me and said, hey, have you been watching the news? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And- um, Yeah, talk, yeah talk, talk to me about that day. Let's go back to that uh, day for a second. You know, I just, listen, this is our first time 
talk, you know, this is our first Chaos Twins since the new of year and yes, of 2021. And I feel like I said to someone, like January 1st, 2021 mm -hmm. for me was like the most aggressive December 26th ever. It was the most aggressive day after Christmas feeling I've ever had in my whole life. Because yeah. I feel like, you know, while you're looking to the new year, 2020 has been hard for a lot of reasons and for a lot of people. Yeah. And it was just like, gosh, we could just, getting through the year was just such a mile marker for all of us, I think. Mm -hmm. But then you got mm -hmm. to 2021, and if you've seen the memes of just like Freaky Friday twins, or like the Olsen twins of just like 2020, 2021, just the realization that we are still here, we are still, we're still dealing with all of these things. Um, that was really tough. So I was in the middle of a nap that may have been coping with a bit of that shock on January mm -hmm. 6th, just like the waves of that. And I get a call from you that says, Hey, have you, have you, are you seeing this? And I'm like, what? I don't know what, <laughs> like we just elected, you know, Reverend Raphael Warnock and the Senate and John Ossoff to the Senate yesterday. What could, what, can we just have this moment? And yeah. I turned on yeah. the news and I just, there's an image that we'd love to share that has not left me. It hasn't left me. Mm -hmm. I can't, mm -hmm. like, I was sleeping like a week mm -hmm. ago and I just like, <gasps> and that's what I saw was just this. I just can't get over it. It's so shocking. And I wasn't, I said, you know, you were like, they're storming the Capitol. Sasha, you said they're storming the Capitol, Sasha. And I was like, what? Okay, sure. And you go, no, 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 no. It's really bad. I'm going to go, but you should turn on the news. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you and know, that's what you I know saw, if, and I haven't been able to unsee it. And you know, you know that if I'm telling you to turn on the news, specifically me, then you know it's bad. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't watch the news. So, so it was bad. Um, yeah. But, you know, I think, I mean, I... And listening to what you're saying, I think I think that that's you know so much of the theme I think of today of inauguration day, especially with our amazing amazing guests who I, I truly can't wait to get to and and, and talk to. Um, so much of the theme today is is picking up the pieces and 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 stepping forward, right? That's I think what I loved about the inauguration was mm -hmm. this simultaneous uh, acknowledgement of the fact that we are not where we would like to be, but yeah a promise that if we work together, we can get there. And to do so, uh, a second acknowledgement that that we have to call, not to use, you know, to use a crude term, we have to call a spade a spade. We have to call it what it is before we can get to where we're going. Very and sober. that's what I, very sober. And, and, and it should be, and I think that that, you know, I've been thinking a lot about the nature of freedom recently what is freedom what does it mean to be free and and you know so often on uh on chaos twins we we try to liven it up and, and keep it funny and but but i think more importantly we keep it real here and 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 talking about the nature of freedom especially in 2021 it just it continues to strike me what does it mean to be free uh in this landscape and you know i i want to <laughs> i want to point out uh somebody who had a very free reaction our friend aaron albano who says he was making cookies and all spilled his brown butter. It's very, I, we understand that, Aaron. Um, it was a spill your brown butter moment. It was a spill <laughs> your brown butter moment. Um, but I think that, I think that one of the things that strikes me about freedom is that it's also freedom of honesty, freedom to just be honest with where you're at. And I think what I'm feeling that is such a relief is um, for so long, we've had an administration that has told us to, you know, stiff upper lip it mm. through what is potentially, you know, the most disastrous event of our lifetime. Right, right. And I think that what I felt watching the inauguration was an immediate release into, okay, we're asking, we're finally asking the right questions. Right. I don't care if this man has an answer. Um, I care what questions he asks. And 
that's what I saw. I saw it represented in everybody who spoke and everybody up there. There was just a sense of like, we have work to do. Yeah. And, and that I think is so integral to wherever we're going from here forward. Um, you know, like it really is this thing where we just, we have to, we have to be truthful to who we are and where we're at before we can take these next steps, before we can, we can be America, the great country. Um, yeah. You know, so it was, it was, it was lovely to see a president, a president and a vice president come at it with empathy, come at it with, with hope, but also with making space for pain. We haven't had, we haven't had space for our pain yeah. for four years for, I mean, for much longer, but, but certainly for these past four years. Um, yeah. So I think like, it speaks a lot to what you were saying about trust and that yeah. if we're not operating from the same reality and we're not starting, if we're not at the same starting point of, of where we are as a country and we're not really embracing the full truth and every, you know, different, um, different realities, then we can't, how can we trust each other? If, yeah. and you've said this a lot, it's like, if your facts are not my facts, how, what, what are we even talking about? It's just, and so the establishment of a starting point, like you said, it seems like such a low bar, which is really uh, frustrating, I know, and for a lot of us, but I think it's better than nothing. And, um, you know, maybe, and I, within the breakdown of the past four years, the breakdown has really revealed, has revealed a lot of things. And so hopefully we're able to, again, invite some of these new realities in um, and have a starting point that allows us to envision something different. Um, and I know our guest today, uh, mayoral candidate, Diana Mora uh, Morales, Diana Morales is, um, it's a, it's a, it's a new, an envisioning of a new structure. And I think while we're, while we're looking at like things that have not worked and things that are breaking down and how we always operate and what's working for who, and anytime you invite a new, um, concern and a new person and we're trying to be more inclusive. We have, you know, been talking about diversity and inclusion for forever now, not forever since mm -hmm. like 2020, summer 2020, but whatever, <laughs> but we're here. And it's just as you're inviting, anytime you invite someone in new, you got to really reassess the landscape. And I think just like, I'm really interested in, um, you know, we have systems and I, I, today again, I was struck by, yes, we have this system of democracy that, and we have this passage of power, um, you know, this transfer of power every four years or every eight years. And mm -hmm. it's actually really, really important. And even in the midst of these glaring examples of a system that does not work for everyone, we elected our first, you know, woman uh, vice president, our first black, our first South Asian vice president. And there were just people speaking of one of our, you know, tagums, um, just people, Amanda Gorman, just like these women who would not have been in the space, um, like yeah. two weeks, two weeks earlier, this is what's happening. And two weeks later, you know, you just have this woman you have these women, <laughs> it's shocking and it's beautiful. And um, just that we have to, this re-envisioning of, of what what works, how does it work, but the, and the struggle and the, the commitment and the mm -hmm. pain and, the, and, the, and the, the effort that it takes to operate within these systems and just try to, try to reimagine the thing without, just, without destroying it. It's actually a very precarious balance. You know, I'm so glad you said that because that's that's actually the I want I want to touch on this before our, our wonderful guest comes in, and maybe we maybe we 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 can bring this back up with her. But I think that is so important. Not destroying it. Not destroying it. Yeah. What is that? Yeah. What does that even look? What does that even look like? What is it? What does it look like? What are right. the tangible things that we do? What are what are the things that we actually want to keep? Because it just. It just occurs to me that so much of this has been squeezed by those mm. by those institutions which no longer serve us, right? We, we, we are truly being governed by a document that is 400 years outdated. And, and what is it what, so what does it mean to, to, to not destroy it? What is it what, what are the things that we're looking to keep? And quite frankly, 
how do we remove ourselves? You know, one of the things I saw with Amanda Gorman um, that, that I wasn't too hot on, and it's not about her, but people were automatically, you know, in the, the pundits and everyone was automatically putting all their hopes on people, on this one little girl who read an amazing, not the little girl, she's a woman, sorry, who read an amazing poem. Um, and it's like, y'all, so she's not your savior. Yeah. And she has no responsibility to be. Yeah. When when do we understand that it's us? That is that is that is the savior. That is the thing. It's us and it's us engaging with people who are different from us and it's us facing these things that terrify us. It's 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 conversations like the ones we're having right now. It's all of these things. It is not one person reading a beautiful poem on the Capitol steps. It is not. Right. Right. That 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 pushes you forward. Yeah. That gives you the hope to do so. But like, how do we encourage the nation to engage in the national conversation? You know, that that is that is I think if you know, obviously the Biden Harris administration is gonna have to fight a war on seven fronts, but I think that is the overarching theme of all those battles. Mm-hmm. How do we engage the conversation again? Um and in a way where it's not, where it is a conversation between us, not something that uh, that is personal, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Again, I think like I've I've had this conversation with a few. You know, I'm from Georgia. Uh, it's very, it's a very conservative state on some. It's still, you know, on some fronts. And we had an election just went blue this year. But it's just, it's this wild um, environment where you have neighbors and people that you interact with every day, and you never talk about anything. You talk, mm-hmm. you talk about everything, but, and you can have these like widely, you know, um, just des- disparate views that you just never, we don't know how to talk about. We don't know how to like build those paths towards each other. And um, I just said, you know, it's like, we, we learn, you learn a lot of politics from your parents and you learn a lot of politics from the places that you grow up. But when we talk, how do we talk about civics? How do we talk about how we do, how we talk to each other? How do mm-hmm. you build those bridges? How do you have those conversations? Why is it important? Why shouldn't, you know, a, a, a senator or a Senate majority leader, leader ever say, I don't care what they try to do, we're going to block it. Why should that not have, like, why does that not work? And why is that not okay? Because if you can't, if you can't, if we can't agree on that, that like some stopping up the actual process that we've agreed to use to discuss our issues and to to get things done in our country, if we don't, if we can't recognize that as problematic, but we, and then better yet that we like, or worse yet that we go and then say, actually, yeah, that's standing up for what I believe. That's what it means to stand up for what I believe in. What it, then you have neighbors that you've, lived next to for 15, 20 years, and then you've never been able to figure out how do we have a conversation? Mm -hmm. You've never been taught. We don't learn that in school. You don't learn those things. You just, so like, like, how do we have these conversations? How do we respect the rules that we've been placed? How do we give people more access to into the conversation and into the debate and onto the floor and into the rooms where the decisions are being made and create spaces where everyone's voices are heard and empowered? and that that is just that's radical. It's very radical, yeah. and it's a hard thing to do. Um, but I hope that we are. I hope that we uh, we are. We're, people are doing the work. Speaking no, of which, are. speaking of speaking people of doing speaking the work, people doing the work. Yeah, no. Our, yeah. So our our guest today. So we were introduced to this guest by another one of our guests, um, Iffy, who is you know uh, you know lawyer activist, just incredible, incredible person. And uh, she introduced us to uh, Diane Morales, who is a uh, mayoral candidate for our wonderful city, city of New York, New York City. And um, you know, we got the chance to be on a on a Zoom with this uh, this this amazing woman. And literally, as we were on the Zoom, I remember texting Sasha like, "Yo, uh, <laughs> we need to get her on Chaos Twins because I mean, yeah. it was it was it was just kind of striking the, the amount of truth that was just dropped on the conversation." Uh, within like minutes of her being there, and I was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. we got to talk." So uh, you know, let's let's yeah. do this. Diane, come on in. What's up? <laughs> Hi. Hey, y'all. How are you? We're so oh, good. We're we are so so we're honored here. and so happy to have you here. I'm- 
So thrilled to be here. I feel like I should be saying like Happy New Year or something. Like it feels <laughs> like there should be a some sort of phrase that captures today, you know, congratulations, <laughs> something. We I don't know, it. but it just we made it. We're here. Right? We did it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. For sure. Oh yeah. Um, oh, I, I don't know about y'all, but I've been I've been listening to you at you know, all the feels. Just all <laughs> you know, this is bringing up today is bringing up a lot of stuff for us, right? Yeah. 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 How yeah. are you feeling? Talk to us about your feels. I, you know, so I was, when you said that you couldn't get that image out of your mind and you showed that um, image on your screen, I, I thought you, it's so funny because when you said it, I, I have my image and I wonder, um, I, it makes me wonder, like, do we all have our image? And my image actually um, happened later that day. It was when um, we started to see the black, brown, Asian, immigrant looking folks cleaning up the trash mm. yeah. that white supremacy has left in the Capitol, <laughs> literally yeah. and figuratively for hundreds yes. of years. Yes. For yes. me, it was mm. that image um, that is seared into my brain. Um, and, yeah. and in this moment in time, right, for that to be the thing, that it's our people that are cleaning it up. Um, yeah. And there you know, these vestiges of, of white supremacy yeah. um, that are literally rooted in mm -hmm. the foundation of this country. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's I, uh, thing. That is very striking to me because I think a lot about, again, watching or and listening to Amanda and Nick and what you said about, you know, all of a sudden everyone puts their hopes in there. They, they sort of pinpoint this person as like an example of we're okay. We're everything's, everything's fine guys. Like we're on the right path. Instead of sitting with, I, I just think of the, the patience and the bitter pills and the, yep. the crap we've had to clean up that from generation, the actual, like you said, the actual crap. And then just the things we've had to hold the trash bags we've had to carry. Mm -hmm through generations i yep. just i've thought about you know this insurrection again two weeks ago for people who are mad about an election a free and fair election that they that mm -hmm. it just did not go their way or the way that they thought mm -hmm. it should and what it took for some the ancestors of someone like amanda gorman to get her to that podium today yeah the patience required the suffering required to just mm -hmm. sit with that. Mm -hmm. And that, and the discipline, like you're speaking about, uh, to show up for work. The grace. Up the, crap. the grace. The grace. Yeah. The grace, right? Because to Nikki's point earlier, right, we're always expected to take it on the chin. We're always expected right. to go high, right? And yeah. as much as I, you know, I appreciate <laughs> that. I really, really do. And it got also, us. It got us a certain amount. It got us a little ways for a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and also, we need to. There needs to be space for our anger and our grief, and you know, our rage around the injustice and the inequities, um, and the and the you know the state of affairs, if you will. Yeah. Um, because that's also part of what what, what propels us, right? I mean, we yeah. we need to in order for us to be able to heal, we actually have to have space for that. Um, yeah. And the yeah. denial of that, the denial of that just, um, you know, I think further perpetuates the status quo and, and, and keeps us in so many ways from being able to, to change the situation, right? To create mm -hmm. the change. You, you first have to acknowledge what's wrong in order the to reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where so, are we? How can you change a problem without assessing where you're at to begin with? Yeah. yeah. So in, in that vein, let me ask you to, you know, uh, beautiful people a question i was having this conversation earlier you know uh, there's a joke right about about uh and sasha i sent you this video uh like <laughs> the idea yes. of like when you, you know you're you're only a racist after your second clan meeting right like the first one maybe you show up because it's a barbecue and they got good ribs and sh you know and shit. When, but the second one, if you go back <laughs> after that second one, then then there's a problem. <laughs> and, and I <laughs> So bad. You get it. You get a you pass for the first one. <laughs> you get a pass. You're like, oh, you happened to be there. You didn't know. It was just. It turned into it was a, like thing. a thing. Right. Yeah. It was like, oh my god. Yeah. All of a sudden, they got hoods on. Like, I don't know where I am. 
know what I mean? Like that kind of, that kind of transition. <laughs> so my question is this, you know, for the two of you looking at this, this event, which is clearly stuck in our core and stuck in our core, I think for reasons that we might not even have words for yet, right? Mm -hmm. Things right now, we know that this was an event that was just traumatic in terms of the national aesthetic, but also we're dealing with uh, questions of the justice system and questions of who gets arrested for what and all these things that this precipitates. Mm -hmm. So at what, you know, part of, as you said, Diane, so much of this is about that change and that acknowledgement, but it's also about forgiveness. Mm -hmm. It's also about forgiveness. And one of the things that sticks with me is I, I look at these people who are, who are protesting or not protesting, riding at the Capitol. And what I think is fascinating is that at their core, they are asking for so many of the same things we are. Like yeah. literally, literally, the only difference is they were told that this is the way to get it by one by one man and, and his team, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 knowingly or unknowingly fed into a system of prejudice and racism and all these things. Mm -hmm. So where does I guess that's my question is where does forgiveness come in? You talk mm -hmm. about grace. What does that grace look like? Because I got to tell you, I can't, there's a certain point at which if, you know, I can, I can understand people who, who voted for this man, uh, you know, out of economic desperation out of, you know, but to be quite frank, if you're still with him after grab him by the pussy, if you're still with him after proud boy, stand back and stand by, there's not much that I, there's not much space that I can make for you. If you're still waiting for him, if you're still saying, no, if you give him a chance, he'll be presidential. Right. He's shown you who he is. And even with his farewell, not to dwell on this, but even with his farewell, it was like, wow, you really are who we think you are. Mm -hmm. and, and that, so I, I just how do we, in terms of that acknowledgement, people who still are, look, are, are finding the good in what happened, um, that, I, forgiveness and forgiveness without condescension and meeting that common ground. What, what does that even do? You, can we just spit all about what that might even look like? I think she froze. Oh, a little frozen. Oh, oh, oh there, there you go. Now. You're back. Now you're, yeah. back. you're back. I'm back. Still a little frozen. <laughs> She's coming back. She's going to come back. I, 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 I overloaded the thing. I, I overloaded the, the chat. Just, it's all right. We don't. Is we don't. Me, we don't wait. Freezing we, for you guys. Okay. Yes. Um. I, I, the first thing is actually. Okay. Am I here? Yeah. Um, yeah. The, yes. the first thing is actually that I feel like. Oh no. It's all right. It's, it's, <laughs> I don't know if you, you can see me or not. More than you're freezing, I but know. I feel like yeah. Now you're not frozen. Okay. I How about like now? now? Is it better? All right. Now okay. I feel like it's better. All right. So, uh, all right. Let's see how far I can get this time. Um, <laughs> I have so many reactions to what to what you just said. But the first thing is like I think you give Donald Trump. I'm a, I say that I said the name. It's the, the first time I think I've said it in four years. I think you give him too much credit to mm. to when you say that he's the one who did this. I I I think he may have been the spark on some level, but all this stuff was there for all of those people and in, in our country for hundreds of years, right? He gave them permission to let it all hang out, but I don't think he created that. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, I think this goes back to what I think Sasha was talking about before I came on, which was sort of like, how do we teach people about this democracy that we live in and, and how do we teach them to honor that? And, and we don't, right? Um, and so, so there's something to be said for the role that schools and education should be playing in, in civic and de democratic participation. Um, but I don't think, you know, I think we have to, th this goes to what my earlier comment about like reckoning and, and reconciling with what, who we are. We have to recognize that this country was built on the premise of white supremacy yeah. and superiority, yeah. right? And we have to confront that 
and we have to agree to tackle that. And we have to understand that confronting that does not have to doom us to continuing to perpetuate it. And I think there's a lot of fear on, on, the, on the side of white folks. I think there's a fear about confronting it, right? Because like they feel like they're gonna get stuck. And as far as I know, I'd be curious to hear from you all, we don't want, we don't care about whether or not white people feel guilty. We just want them to do what they needs to be, what we need to do to fix it. Right. Yes. 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 It's not a face in the mud moment. It's not look at what you've done. It's we have to sit with this. Like we've been sitting with this. Welcome to the table. Welcome to the class. Like juice and cookies are in the back. If you could just sit, <laughs> so we could all just be yeah. here together and move forward from all of our from all the places that we have come and some of you know i i say to um you know again friends from the south all the time i don't know what it's like to come from a house of uh you know where you may be related to confederate soldiers i don't know what it's like to grow up in that environment but i i i don't you know i don't know what it's like to have white supremacy and white supremacist ideas maybe to look like that or to, for that to live inherently in you. You have to bring that knowledge to the right. table. And that knowledge is actually very necessary for us to be able to move forward. And I can't, so, you know, I can't lead the thing, the whole thing. Amanda Gorman can't lead the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Abby Phillips, who I love mm -hmm. on CNN, she's beautiful and she's like my new, I'm in like new fangirl for like that correspondent. She can't <laughs> lead the whole thing. She's not the solution. Mm -hmm. You know, like we need everyone right. to come from their from their perspectives and with their knowledge and most importantly, like with their honesty to actually yeah. move forward together. I'm not interested. Yeah, I'm really I don't know about you guys, but I'm really not interested in the guilt. I'm not interested in the tears. <laughs> like, I could care less. Right. Like, just, I know that you need to do that. It. Yeah. But if you could yeah. just move through that, like, keep. I don't want you to stay there. I really, really don't because yeah. I, I need you to move through it and to, to actually move to make the, the structural changes, the progress that we really need. That's right, that's right. And I so think that's me... where, to, just to connect it to one more point that you, one more part of your question, Nikki, is that the, that's where the forgiveness comes, mm -hmm. right? That's what makes it possible, right? If, if we're at the table, I love the image that you use, Sasha, about the classroom. <laughs> you know, if we're at the table and, and reconciling and, and committing to move forward together, that makes forgiveness much more possible. I, I don't mm. wanna get tied up in your guilt. I don't wanna get tied up in like, because that makes it about you. Mm. And, and it's not about you. Yeah. Right? It's about justice. Yeah. <laughs> it's about all of us. It's about community. It's about how we exist day to day together with each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's it's absolutely right. And and uh, yeah, it's, you guys are, I, I, I go back and forth on that, you know, so I, part of my, you know, part of my journey, this, this, uh, this quarantine has been, has been wrestling with my, and I always talk about my anxiety, but, but getting on medication for my anxiety. And one of the things that I found so interesting was once I was on medication for my ADHD, realizing, being able to look back at pan attacks that I had, blowups that I had and see what that was in the context of, of mounting anxiety. And the process of, of trusting myself, trusting myself around other people, um, forgiving myself for my, for that part has been a process. And I, and I look at that on a national scale because we, as people of color, um, we, we have been living through abuse, systemic abuse. So it's not, you know, the forgiveness aspect, I mean, you're so right, Diane, because the forgiveness aspect of it is not only them, people who are, who have not made a space for the systemic racism and the systemic um, oppression uh, in their lives, but also for us to allow for that trust to come into our lives. And I think that's so much of my question too, is like, I don't know how the hell I'm in trust. I don't like, like we were talking at the beginning, I truly, I truly don't know when I'm going to be down to like fully extend my hand and be like, yep, yeah, cool. And it might not even be in my lifetime, quite frankly. Um, and that's, that's fine, you know, but I, I just, I, I, I think that that is so important what you said. It, it really, 
does come full circle mm -hmm. like that. Um, I do. I, I mean, we we have you here, and I I, I know you know I want to talk about all this, but I do want to talk about you because you are just such an, a gift to the city, um, and and everything that you're bringing. So if if uh, you know, I I would love to kind of use this opportunity to just shift and like talk <laughs> about. I mean, I, you're bringing up some amazing points, and I I just want to dig into like where these points came from. Um, so, you know, one of the things that I know me and Sasha were wondering was, you know, you obviously come from a family of where activism is key and core to who mm -hmm. you guys are. Um, but but the, the interesting thing is, you know, I think that if you speak to people who come from that that amazing background as you do, you know, oftentimes you find that there's there are points at which activism is actually overwhelming, is actually scary, is actually a proposition that is like, okay, well, everyone in my family is doing it. How do I fit into this? And so I just wanted to, you know, just for you, who was, when you were first starting out, you know, and, and looking at what your parents were doing and, and where you wanted to go, was there ever a moment where it felt a little overwhelming for you to, to go yeah. into public service? Was that, yeah. Yeah. So that's a really good question. And um, I haven't thought about it in that way. I, so, and I, cause I, it's really interesting to hear you describe it. Cause I've never thought about my parents as activists. Um, and that's partially because they don't fit into the sort of mental mindset of today's vision of activists, right? But my, you know, my parents were always uh, the way they did it was a really sort of quiet community way, like, and and they did it by by opening our home to anyone who was in need, right? Um, mm. Which you know, in today's in today's framework is probably more of a mutual aid model, right? Um, so you know, we always had people staying in our house who were not part of the nuclear family. <laughs> it was people who were coming over from the island who needed a place to sort of get their act together. It was people who were being uh, really, you know, who recently returned home from incarceration or from military service, you know, just kind of like literally always somebody up in the house, right? Like yeah. it was just sort of like mm -hmm. a given. And, and I think what that did for me was to, it created a different perspective for me as to what community is. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And and the idea that um, it's not a zero sum game in terms of what we have and what we give. If you if you if you're if you're surviving, you have something to give. Right. Wow. You have something to offer. Um, and and I think, you know, for me, that that was the sort of um, the launching pad. To the act activism that I have taken on in my life, right? Because I came from that very, very humble working class home, you know, um, with my parents. And, but I had access to, you know, I was found myself in these elite institutions as a first generation, you know, uh, blue collar working class girl. And in, and in that way became aware of, oh wait, there's not a lot of folks that look like us up in here. What's going on? Right? <laughs> yeah. And then you start to do that analysis, right? And and so as I got older, I was like, there's something messed up here because it's not about me being so special or me being so talented or me being so whatever. Um, and so that's how I started to then, you know, think about, okay, what do I need to do? What, mm -hmm. this is bigger than me, right? And I talk about that a lot in terms of my campaign. This is a bigger structural thing. And, and I didn't have mm -hmm. the critical analysis at 14, 15, but that's definitely when I started thinking about these things. Um, mm -hmm. And my mm -hmm. children have followed in my footsteps. Uh, and so, you know, I think when, when I think about like this past summer and the, the increased violence, um, you know, police against the sort of the, the movement um, that was definitely when it really kind of clicked for me about, you know, we are putting our lives and our bodies on the line mm. um, yeah. in order to stand up for the civil rights of our community. Um, and it was every day, whether organizing or marching or, or serving as, as what they call a marshal. Marshals are the people that um, that keep the boundaries of a protest, they stand the, on the outskirts, keep the protesters, sort of protect the protesters and keep the, try to keep the um, police out. So I was, I served as a marshal and, and that's wow. when you realize, okay, you're putting your life on the line. Um, but also it's bigger than you. And so it is something that, you know, for yeah. the cause you do. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I love that. So I yeah. think what what strikes me, and we'll we'll get more into it about your campaign and the way you speak is, and 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 from knowing Ify as well, you're one of your senior advisors. Um, it's just the value, what we value, and how the metrics by which we measure like the worth or the need for some someone or something in an environment. And to say, like, you know, if what I have to offer my body as this person, as this marshal at this protest, if I'm surviving, I have something to offer. It's not about whether, you know, the like how big my bank account is. If I have space and someone needs it and I can offer that, I have something of value to give. Yeah. And the service that you're doing, what it means to be, to offer that to community, that there's actual value in that. And that just because as a larger system, and particularly with a lot of like um, sort of un you know wa wildly unregulated capitalism that it doesn't necessarily value what that the yeah. the structure that that can give to a community that is surviving that is is thriving right. and surviving on its own without a lot of outside help and right. sometimes with a lot of roadblocks in its way and I just mm -hmm. you know what what it takes to organize a community around something like Black Lives Matter. And yeah. to put people in that place and to put your body on the line, it's just a very different way of thinking about what do I, what value do I have in the society that I'm in, mm -hmm. particularly when the message is that you're literally protesting the message that you're not, that you're not valuable. Right. That's right. That you're, that you're disposable, anything. actually. You're yeah. disposable. disposable. Yeah. So the thing I, I, is like, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say. I mean, I think it. I think it reflects two things that are um, almost diametrically opposed, right? The first is um, the failings of the existing structures and systems. You could call them the failings, or you could say they're operating exactly as they were intended, right? Because mm -hmm. they weren't created. They weren't created for us. Um, so there's there's that the systemic and the structural piece, and, but then there's also the other piece, which is the 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 beauty, the strength, and the power of our communities. Right. The ability yeah. that we do have to actually take care of each other, the ability that we do have to solve our own problems. Right. Mm -hmm. That is a um, that is a strength. That is a, a power that is, to me, one of the most beautiful things mm -hmm. I have had the privilege to be a part of. Right. And to yeah. see that and to operate in that space is so, I, I, you know, I, I don't know, it. it it makes me, it gives me a sense of purpose. Mm. Um, and I can't help but think about how much better we would all be and all do if we just universally adopted some of those principles and practices of being in community and caring for community. Um, and so much of that is the grounding and the foundation of this campaign as well. Yeah, mm. yeah. So, so uh, go, go ahead, Sasha, go ahead. I kind of, because I know you have a question about Boston, and I, <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do go, this. Go, go. I'm going to do this. I'm going to ask you, um, so we're at this, we're at this point in the New York City race for the mayor, and people are learning about candidates, figuring out where they're, how they're going to vote, where they're going to vote. And you're speaking about something, again, I think in terms that we don't always think about how a policy gets shaped around that, or what is it, what is it, what does it mean? What does that sound like from a candidate? What does this framework sound like? So I have two questions for you. One being for yourself as a person and a human in the world and as someone who's voted, what are things you look for in a candidate? What does that sound like to you? And then my second follow-up question is what does this community and the structure and these policies, what does that look like in your campaign? Sure. And if um, I could add a sub, a sub, a sub just a okay. quick sub question on that. <laughs> I also, I, I actually, I, on that topic, I wanted to ask about ranked choice voting. I wanted oh, to know yeah. what, just, just, just what, just explaining that yeah. structure to people. Yeah, right yeah. Now. yeah. yeah. That's a good question. Um, so I, I think, you know, to what does it look, what do I look for? Um, I look for someone who can articulate a, a clear and compelling vision um, that speaks to specifically the communities um, that, that where I feel represented, right? Mm. Um, you know, people of color, low income, working class, single mothers, 
um, <laughs> yes. who, uh, you know, single mothers, like that. I look for people who, who can articulate a compelling vision about wh what they're going to do and how they're going to elevate those communities and an understanding of the role and the importance of those people in just in society at large. Um, and then sort of a, 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 a plan for how they're going to do that. Right. Um, the, not just the vision, right? How are you going to work backwards from that vision to make it a reality? Because it's easy to talk the talk. And actually, right. you know, there's a lot of talk. Um, it's what politicians do. Um, <laughs> and so I, I, so I think for me, that's the, that's what I have always looked for. And I think that's, you know, to invoke, to invoke Barack Obama, that's certainly what he did that mesmerized, not just POC, right? But like the country. Everyone. In many ways, yeah. Right. Um, and so, you know, for me, when I, in, in terms of my, my campaign, I, I think there was what I might have said a year ago, um, and what I focus on now, which is, um, slightly, slightly different because of what we've been through. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, I think when, you know, a year ago I thought, oh, we, you know, we need somebody who looks like us, who's been through some of our experiences and also can run stuff. Um, and get ish done right um, in this in this position, but now I feel like oh wait a minute, this is we are this is a non negotiable. This there's a political and a moral imperative at this moment in time because we can't unsee what we just saw in 2020 <laughs> and what we just saw had actually may have been exacerbated by COVID 19, but we all know right. it all existed long before that. And that, you know, right. those inequities and those disparities are deeply rooted. And so, you know, I don't want to to tie things to the events of today and my, some of my mixed feelings. Some of my mixed feelings about today is that people are going to feel so relieved that they're just going to relax and chill and be like, we're done. We're good. But okay. we're not. We're right? not. We're, we're really not. not. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so how do we keep that movement going and how do we keep that pressure going and how do we keep moving forward? Um, and, you know, part of my message right now is the window. We have a window right now to, to really try to push for some kind of critical change before people get yeah. too comfortable again. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we need to push for that transformational systemic change now. Um, yeah. And that's what I, you know, that's why I keep, you know, we talk, I go to these mayoral forums and they talk about, you know, economic recovery and, you know, the answer is always like really immediate, get the businesses back, get people back to work. But no, no, wait a minute. Can we just talk about how we do this businesses thing, the capitalist structure and how that just maintains the status quo and perpetuates inequities? Yeah. Right. Actually, now we get to do things differently. We could actually think about whose businesses. Yeah. Right. And, right. And, and who we're supporting and, and how we generate community wealth. Yes. As opposed to relying on these external extractive yes. businesses. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, that that's the frame when I talk about wanting us to fundamentally transform the paradigm that we use to think about how we move forward. It's not looking back i don't want to the other thing i you know i don't want to bring new york city back i think we mm. need to actually create a new new york city that lives up to the rhetoric of being yeah. the greatest city in the world because we yeah. have never been that yet but we could be <laughs> right right mm. Mm. yeah so um and uh, you know as for the the rank choice voting so this is new right um and there's a lot of concerns about how it might potentially disenfranchise communities of color. Um, I don't right. think the city. Is, I don't think the city is prepared for it. They're they haven't. They're not doing education around it. They haven't even figured out the technology around it. Um, I think there's a lot of candidates that are working to help provide some education to the community. Um, but I also think what the cool thing is about the potential of implementing this, if we can get it right, um, <laughs> is the idea that people will get to vote with their values, right? Mm. Like the way we've had the voting system before, it's kind of, it's been polarized, right? So you kind of felt like you have to choose the lesser of two evils, even when you weren't really excited about either candidate, right? right? Mm. Now you get to go, oh, I love that candidate and what they're saying, right? I don't know, maybe, maybe they have enough money to run a viable campaign, maybe they don't. 
but that's the person yeah. if I could choose, that's the person right. I would choose. Right. Mm. And then you get to go, oh well, this person doesn't excite me, but it's looking like that might be it. So they could be my number two. You know what I mean? Like you just it just removes that kind of like either mm -hmm. or yep. tension. Right. Yeah. And, like the and all you, in sort of it, all the eggs in one basket. And yeah. And you get to, and you, right. And you really get to say, these are, this is, I'm going to rank my people in the order that I like them most based on the values, based on the vision, based on the principles, based on the executive skills. Like I get to do that. Um, and mm -hmm. I think that's a greater choice. There's greater choice in that. Yeah. Mm. No, that's, that's, I mean, and, and, it, and it is such a, you know, it's one of those things that, that I feel, you know, you can already feel the establishment fighting back so hard against, right? Yeah. Because, well, how does it shake? And, and that's all, that's always what seems to happen is a new idea gets thrown in the ring and we're not there yet. Do you know what I mean? Like slow down. We're not there yet. And, mm -hmm. and what I love about what you're saying is like, no, we've been there. We actually, we, we actually, we're there. We, we were there 30 years ago. You know, mm -hmm. and yeah. and and just this idea of of playing catch up, um, you know, to something that that should have changed so many years ago, um, I, I, is 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 so wonderful. So so on that topic, then you know, you talk about uh, wanting to move NYC forward and and push it to this to this this you know the 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 promise of what it always says it was. You know, talking kind of macro to micro, what are you looking at in terms of your vision for the city? Like, what is it that you want for the city yeah um so it, you know let's, just, let's see if i can put this in in the simplest of terms in the simplest of terms I big, yeah big question big question I, I, I want you know i want us to a couple things right um i think i've, I've said before maybe maybe i said this with you guys last time there are no single issue struggles because there's no single issue people mm -hmm. right the need for us to recognize that survival public health, public safety, um, and housing are all inter in interconnected. You can't do one without the other. So that's the first thing. There's a complexity here. And our approach historically has been to try to sort of do one thing or the other and not recognize that our communities, low-income black and brown communities, have been plagued by a variety of different challenges throughout the course of history, right? And that we have to make a commitment to address those comprehensive challenges and that that involves a fundamental reframing, right? In terms of how people can access housing, housing in New York City is ridiculously expensive, yeah. right? Why is that? Because we focus and prioritize developing out how we provide housing. Housing is driven by a speculative market. It's right. not driven right. by the idea of you know, the leadership and the city having a responsibility in providing that housing or sort of you do your share, the city will do its share. Social housing is what we call that, right? Uh, Cooperative mm -hmm. housing. So that's one thing, right? But then, then wages, thinking about how we keep our, how do we keep our wealth in our communities? And how do we prioritize our communities generating intergenerational wealth, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, a quick example of that is, 50% of the New York City workforce is actually employed by small and city, small and medium-sized businesses. Nobody talks about that. Wow. We always talk about the big corporations. Right. But what if we focused on the small and medium-sized? Right. So it's 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 the same things. It's just a literally like a flipping the model on its head and centering and elevating what our communities want, what our communities need. Everybody benefits. Yeah. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah. It does. I, I get, you know, it gets exhausting when we talk about the, like you said, the big name businesses and the attract, we, I think our culture, we just look to like recognize, recognizable names, faces, one person, like one person at the top of the ticket, one office, like and one, just these high profile things. And you forget about it and you wait, there's this, the story that the success of that is going to trickle down to the communities rather than where is the insurance and the guarantee? Where is the math that guarantees the infusion of, of resources? And it, like you said, intergenerational wealth, that ability into the community and making sure that that's happening, not um, 
sort of waiting for the 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 story of that to come true. Right. And and history has shown that it doesn't work, right? The whole trickle down yeah. economics, it it doesn't work. Um and we, we still can, believe it. We still think right. it'll come, you know, it's gonna, right. oh yeah, this this big business is coming to New York or this big thing, they're giving money to this big thing. So that feels like it somehow it's related to me. And when you really look at the math of it and the history of it, it's not. Right. Right. Well, that's what we're taught, right? I mean, we're taught that that's the way it works. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, true, true. Uh, there's an undoing. Yeah. Oh, I think you're a little for. Yep. <laughs> she gonna come back. She go no now you're it's not. It's when we start speaking the hot truth. It I'm just here. I'm, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> It gets crazy. It gets crazy. No, but but it's 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 so true. You know, I was uh, I'm such a I'm such a nerd, y'all. But I was just thinking about the wire, and I was thinking <laughs> because of course I am. Uh, but it, it it you know that whole you know the whole the beauty of that show, right? Is is the idea that these people who are all working class, whatever whatever institution they're in, whether they are you know drug dealers or cops or dock workers, they are all working class. But they all believe in this idea that if one person can just make it work it will somehow flood down. And that's why most of them get killed is yeah. because it never flows down, right? And, 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 and you know, it, it, it's something mm. that I, I, I think is so important to tackle, not just in terms of the structural stuff, but like you said, Diane, the education, because I think that you, you talk about these changes for our people. I think we as a people also need to tear the lie away from our eyes that that helps us because that, that is so much, I think, has has ingrained itself in our right. culture to the point of you know people believing that the, the goal is to make it out no the goal is not to make it out the goal is to lift right. it up right yeah. and, and 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 doing that yeah. work st starting from the beginning starting from from when like mm -hmm. play the games that you play in kindergarten to let you know that this idea of oh yeah. it's it's you know getting mine is actually not the point and so so what it, I just wanted to know like what are your again huge huge questions but like in terms of that education how did how does that how does that implement itself what are the tangible ways that we can do that within our system yeah so i you know one of the things that like the simple kind of like headlines that i talk about in terms of education and what i think we need to do is i i, I say i think we need to change what we teach and how we teach it right it sounds so simple um but but the reality of it is you know, when you look at our classrooms today, they look a lot like they used to at Little House on the Prairie, right? Kids are sitting mm -hmm. in rows. There's one teacher in the front. Right. And, you know, things are different now. So we need to, yeah. you know, bring things ahead to a different kind of time. And so I, what I talk about, and this was, goes back to what Sasha was talking about earlier, we need to have three core pillars for education, civic and democratic literacy, because our, our young people need to know how to exercise their power, right? Yeah. Being a citizen in this country, being a resident of this country is supposed to, right, in a democracy, come with a certain amount of power and understanding yeah. that from the local level to the federal level um, mm -hmm. and how to wield that power, I think is critical. Um, digital and technological literacy, whether we like it or not, it is here. Look at us, how we're doing this, right? right. Our, right. our children, right? Our children need to understand the tools and the skills that are related to that so that they can make informed choices about their future. And mm. then the third piece is financial literacy. We don't get Come on, say, say it again. We don't, get <laughs> we don't get taught that, right? We don't get taught that. Yeah, you're just like reading my me for filth. Just like the things that you get to adulthood and you're like, I, I did everything, but I feel like I'm treading water and I'm not winning. And that financial literacy, especially for our community, our black and brown community, it's just, these are those skills you're like, it's, you know, you learn trigonometry, but not how to balance checkbook or what it means to be invested in a stock market or how that That's works. Right. Like you just have no idea. That's right. Or like, or taxes and how taxes get taken out of your check and what the tax yeah. money goes to and how that yeah. connects to your civic and democratic literacy and what you <laughs> can vote for. Yeah. Right. I mean, yes. these things are inextricably linked. Absolutely. And we're not, and, and I don't think it's an accident that we're not taught that in school. I don't think it's no. an accident. No, 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 it's not. Not at all. That's the part that I wonder how do we talk about that? 
that this is on purpose. And it's that thing where we're saying, you know, when we're speaking diplomatically or when we're trying to like, you know, have a, a civil conversation, sometimes we will lean on the system's not working, it's failing. But really when we get to the real of it, it's like, or is it working? And these things are on purpose. Mm -hmm. The changes we have to make, you know, I mean, that, that kind of affects how we approach those things, but it, mm -hmm. it is, I, I fully believe I'm like, no, there's a reason that you're not taught. Absolutely. These things. Absolutely. There's a reason. There's a reason. I mean, you know, for, for the longest time, our folks weren't even supposed to read, right? Like right. people will get their eyes gouged, their tongues cut out, like all that stuff, right? right? Right. For, for reading. So this is not an accident. Why would why would we think we went from that to like, oh, now we're going to offer you everything in the school system? <laughs> like, OK, give them the books. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so I'm so Diane, I, I like it's, it's truly I'm trying not to get emotional here, but you got to You got to understand how. I mean, the fact that what you're saying is a radical or new notion in 2021 is the first problem. The second, but the, the beautiful thing is that you're saying it. And, and, it's, and it's also, again, that systemic change because here's the bottom line. We also, you know, we live in an information age. So even for those of us like, like ourselves, Sasha, like you, Diane, who did not grow up with these classes on fiscal and communal literacy, hey. right? We should still be able to ask. Yeah. So, so here I want to I want to throw throw you something that happened to me, and it's something that ha has happened to my to my wife several times. I uh, was asking uh, a pulmonologist a question about about a medication uh, for my asthma, and uh, the medication that he had put me on was a medication that uh, requires two inhalers. I have to take two inhalers mm -hmm. to get the effect. And so I sent him an email just being like, hey, you know, cool. I just, I'm just wondering, is there, is, is there an inhaler that I could take that would just bump it down to one? The defensiveness and vitriol that was sent back to me in the email, uh, phrases such as um, dealing with, you know, finding asthma medication uh, is not like picking out Chinese food from the store, or I have 34 years of pulmonology experience. Now, I've met this man in person. Oh, this man! This man has seen my work. This man knows that I that I've I've had it. I've, I'm I'm okay in my career. I th I was like, wow! If I was a white man, you we would not be having this email chain. And this this is coming from my wife having experienced three months earlier, where she you know she was going to the doctor and had a question, and they just gaslit her into thinking that what she was asking for wasn't appropriate to be asking for it. She doesn't know what she's talking about. She, you know, so it's not only us being educated to, to know what this stuff is, but in that education, it's also, you are given these people and these kids, the confidence to know you have the right to ask questions and you have the right to have those questions answered. That's because right. I'll tell you, I'll tell you the thing that plagues me is all of a sudden you send me that email back and now I'm never going to ask a question again. But that's my health. That's my mm -hmm. physical health. So if I'm scared to ask questions about my health, something I don't know, then how am I ever going to survive COVID-19? Do you mean so it, it really comes back? I, I just I, I, I'm sorry, I'm going to get off my soapbox, but I just love what you're talking about, because mm -hmm. you're, you're get, by, by educating people in this way, black, white, Latino, whatever, you are giving people the confidence to take onus over their own lives, which I tell you is exactly what they don't want. I, I can guarantee you it's what they don't want. Yeah. So yeah. I just, I love yeah. what you're talking about. Love it. Yeah. Well, it, it goes back to what we were talking about before, right? Like acknowledging that it exists, right? Like, you know, yeah. that there's no such thing as colorblind. There's no such, yeah. right? Like, like this exists. Our experiences, our lived and historical experiences are mm. real. And, and yeah. you know, and for so long that has been denied us, right? We get over it, get over it. Slavery was X number of hundreds years ago, right? Like how many times you hear that, right? Like, yeah. oh, I'm experiencing racism now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's validating to who we are and what we've been through uh, because it's also still very real and still very much a part of our It is. 
It is. No, we 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 got it. We got. I was got dropping something, right? Like you are was, always. I'm, never... I'm telling you. It just, it's like oh, scramble it. It's going in. You yeah, said it. You said it. Today, yeah, it can't handle. Right. It just can't handle your truth. That's the problem. Yeah. They're just Streamyard was not ready for for Diane's truth today, oh, and that's and that's and that's Streamyard's problem. <laughs> they need to figure that out on their own. Um, but yeah. no, this is you are so so Diane. It, you know, as as we as we look to 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 Big brother is wrap watching, up, for sure oh yeah oh absolutely oh, they 100%. always have been um you know, uh, <laughs> but but this is so you know i i want to i want to first make sure that people know where to go to find you like where like i know you i know you have a website i know you obviously you have your your, your handle um we're going to throw your, your website in the in the thing oh look at that um, that was so cool you know, so people, people, if yeah, you, yeah people want to find, if you want to yeah. find out more and spend some more time with this incredible candidate, Diane, please go to www.diane.nyc. Um, she's all over the place and obviously very enjoyable to listen to and just so refreshing. So real, so refreshing <laughs> so real. and just real New York city, like very excited for you to be in this race. And, uh, we are, and you look, look at this, <laughs> Lynn, Lynn out here being amazing. So Yay, thank you, Lynn. Thank you. Nice, Lynn. Yes. Um, but one one thing we definitely wanted to do with you is, you know, is is in 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 kind of the tradition of New York City. You know, we we had a man named James Lipton who was a big part of our city, and uh, he had his ten questions that he would normally ask okay. artists and actors. Um, uh, these these kind of famous ten questions, um, and we are trying to continue that tradition with our show. Is is always closing out by asking our guest the James Lipton ten. So would you would you be cool if we asked you these 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 questions? Are you down for answering? Yeah, yeah. Let's play. Let's awesome. do it. They're awesome. off the top. And one, two words. Don't think yeah. about it. Just go for it. Just okay. throw it out. Just throw it out. All right. So the James Lipton ten questions. Diane, what is your favorite word? Oh, um, so extraordinary is the first thing that pops into my mind. Um, but I have to say that the last three weeks. It's been very some. It's been manifest. Ooh, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Manifest. Okay. That's good. So what I, is yeah, your? But normally it's extraordinary, but it, it manifest has been doing something in my life in the last couple of weeks. So I have to I have to put it out there. And I'm sure I'm sure it will continue to do so. I'm sure it will continue to do <laughs> yeah. so. What is your least favorite word? Can't. Hmm. Boom. Don't nobody tell me I can't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we could have called that one. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, easy, easy, easy. Uh, what turns you on? Intelligence. Like, smart people. And I don't mean like books necessarily. I mean like um, analysis, critical analysis. People who mm -hmm. can see things that most people don't automatically see, right? And yeah. not, I also mm -hmm. don't mean just like visually, I just mean like in life. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just think that mm -hmm. is that is the hottest thing. <laughs> Love it. What turns you off? Um, insecurity. Um, and you know, I mean, I think we all have our own insecurities, but, but people who are like overly insecure, um, mm. I think it's it's mm. it's hard for me to handle because you know I think yeah. I also feel like we 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 kind of have been taught we gotta fake it if even if we even if we're we are feeling insecure, yes. right? So <laughs> I think I think it, I think it's made me a little less tolerant of others' insecurities. <laughs> Fair. I love it. Yeah, people who lead with their insecurities for sure. What sound or noise do you love? Um, the ocean. The sounds of the waves in the ocean, the waves, the breeze, the birds, the ocean. Mm. Mm. What sound or noise do you hate? Uh, um, you know, it's it's an it's new one. It's a the sound of helicopters, um, and that is definitely related to the protests <laughs> last summer. Wow. Um, yeah. And because I think That's the amazing. NYPD. Deployed, I think the NYPD deployed their helicopters as a torture tactic for certain communities last summer. Um, wow. To the point where I was actually having having I was having nightmares about helicopters coming in through my window and um, sharpshooters targeting me and my wow. children. Wow! So hel wow. helicopters. 
Yeah, that was that. I got like a real visual image when you asked me that question. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, that's. What is your favorite curse word? <laughs> can I say it? Yeah, you can. <laughs> Whatever you feel comfortable. It's the, yeah, it's, it's the f bomb. It's the f bomb. It's the f bomb. Because that can be like <laughs> a verb. It can be a noun. It can be a <laughs> adverb. <laughs> You know, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, so yeah, I think you know, it's just, it's an adjective. It's just sort of like, yeah, it's oh, versatile yeah. and I like it. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> what, what profession other than you own, or other than your own, would you to attempt? Wait, what? Oh, what, what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Can you hear me? Am I frozen? It's like chopping. You are not awesome. Yeah. But Sasha, I think you're ask back now. I will. Oh, my, what my profession, back. what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Oh, yours. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. Except I can't sing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I did, um, I, I did, I was Dorothy in The Wiz when I was in fifth grade, so. Yes! <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. We love that. So in that, in that vein, you guys can hear me now, right? I'm here. I'm like, yes. here, I'm available. Yeah, you're good. We love it. What yeah. profession other than your own would you least like to attempt? What would you not like to do? Uh... I mean, you know, being in New York right now, the first thing I think about is like um, sanitation. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. God bless. I don't want to pick up other people's garbage. Or yeah. God bless. I don't want to pick up other people's garbage. Yeah. Truly I'm very God grateful bless. to them for the work that they do. Yeah. But I don't want to pick up other people's garbage. Yeah. That's, yeah. I have a hard enough time picking up my own. So I don't want to pick up anybody yeah. else's. Talk about that, how that we evaluate it. value, like how we evaluate yeah. what people's work is worth. Like my God, because yeah. what I will pay to not have to do that. Yeah, exactly. And that, that I also what I love about that is that works in the literal and the metaphorical, Truly. both both <laughs> both realms of picking up people's garbage. You know what? Yeah, uh, and that goes back to yeah. what I said about the image from January sixth that's in my head too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I never realized definitely. that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Speaking, you dropping bombs. Mm -hmm. All right. The final the final question. Here we go. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Oh. You done good. <laughs> you done good. Mm -hmm. We love you that. You done good. We love it. Diane Diane, you are such a, you are such a gem and we are so thankful uh that you would stay and talk with us today and and uh, spread your message. You guys, please follow this woman. Please go on her website. Please donate what you can. Please, you know, engage with her. I mean, this is this is this is the real deal. So so please yeah. go and, and and find out for yourselves uh, if you haven't already. Bitch by bitch by listening to her today. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for being here, Diane. Thank, thank you, you so both much. for having me. This was so much fun. I really appreciate it. I wish <laughs> you both Good. stay safe, stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope to see you soon. You Absolutely. too, you too. Thank All right, y'all. We'll be back. We'll be back soon. We'll talk to you soon. Everybody stay safe out there. Bye, everyone. Bye bye.